Good morning, my name is Lori Stone. I'm the state representative for the 28th House District for the next month and a half. And we're starting our Saturday morning community conversation here at Coonan's uh, with our pint in politics. And this is November 2022. This is one of our last community conversation, the last community conversation for the 28th House District. Um, when you get a chance, if you haven't already, sign in if you're participating. Um, and I also have I'm treating for the first round. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So make sure you visit and they have a great list and really good root beer. Um, I like to start off with describing what is your state representative? What do they do? You may think of us as your lawmakers. We create policy. We participate in committees to vet policy. We vote on policy and budgets. Um, for customer service is a big piece of what we do. State government um, departments, um, both in Lansing and in district, we can help you navigate when there is a problem. You can call for assistance with um, issues around unemployment, MDHHS, UIA. Those are some big topics that I have people reach out about. Um, more, more important, express your position on issues. Um, I represent 90,000 uh, residents, and so it's important that I hear from you when an issue is impacting your life so I can help weigh in on it. Um, you can make appointments. You can visit me in Lansing. Uh, we host community conversations, provide mailings, e-newsletters, town halls, round tables, attend community events, visit local businesses and organizations. Um, so regardless of who your state representative is, you need to reach out, contact them, let you, them know your expectations. Um, November, Friday, November 8th was Veterans Day. For any veterans, thank you for your service um, and the sacrifice that went along with it. I attended Macomb Community College's Veterans Recognition Breakfast. They did a wonderful job. Um, veterans that are students and staff have the opportunity to create photo collages and share their experience. Not everybody's military experience is the same, and veteran suicide is one of the most serious concerns. We need to share resources, reassure loved ones that taking care of mental health is as important as physical well-being. Um, I also had the opportunity to attend the Macomb County Veterans Benefits Update with information on disability for illnesses associated with toxic chemical exposure such as Agent Orange during, during Vietnam, contaminated water at Camp Lejeune, or burn pits. That the status has changed and access to benefits is broader than ever. So it is more important that any veterans who um, have served in those uh, environments file an application for benefits and let the VA work out your eligibility. Creating a paper trail, if even you don't benefit from it now, may expand benefits in the future. And so it's very important that we talk to veterans because veteran benefits that are earned during service are underutilized. And so we need to let our veterans know that these are charity, that these are earned benefits, and that, that our veteran services better serve them if they know who and where they are. Let's see, election updates. So our general election was Tuesday, November 8th. Statewide candidates um, elected governor was Gretchen Whitmer for re-election, Attorney General Dana Nessel for re-election, Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson. All the proposals on the ballot passed. Proposal one, which is disclo financial disclosure and term limits. Voters' rights being added to the state constitution, which was proposal two. Reproductive freedom for all, which was proposal three. All our Macomb County millages passed, which included public transportation, special education services, and funding veteran services. Um, the House of Representatives flipped to a Democratic majority. The Senate also 
flipped to a Democratic majority. Um, that means that in the legislature, the Democrats pulled the gavel and set the agenda for the first time in 40 years, along with uh, Democratic leadership. We have, um, we're seeing greater confidence in the election process. We're seeing more people participating in it at every level. Um, and we have clerks that are locally elected and answer to us. They're members of the community. They are decentralized. They, um, the process is public, transparent, and accountable. And you can play a role in every step. So if it's something that you're interested in, reach out to the city clerk and get involved. Um, lame duck is the two months of legislation between election day and the beginning of the new administration takes their seat in January. It depends on the shifting power dynamics, how much, how many times the legislature meet, how much um, policy is passed. Um, and I anticipate since it will be a complete reversal for the legislature from a Republican Senate and House to a Democratic Senate and House with a governor um, that we are not going to see a whole lot of action in the next six weeks. Um, we, have, we were told that October 6th and possibly October 13th we will be meeting. Uh, there is still $6 billion in the state budget available and well it's um, kind of there's a target to use it for tax relief, local, uh, whether it's earned income tax uh, benefit, a rebate, rebate. It's, um, I, I'm not sure if it's going to move before the first of the year or in January. So that's still pending. COVID-19 updates. So I'm part of the equity coalition in the community to reduce barriers and access encourage use of vaccination and prevention for severe outcomes, hospital, hospitalizations, or death. So COVID transmission rates in Michigan, thankfully, are low, which is a good thing. However, um, well, we have flu cases that are low for Michigan's region. Other regions, like the Southeast, uh, have very high flu transmission rates. Mm -hmm. What does this mean? means a good, it's a good time to get a flu shot if you haven't already because we know it takes a couple weeks for you to boost immunity. Um, we know that we're going to be getting together with family and friends over the holidays and um, you're going to see a lot of national travel, people flying in from different regions. So just picture a bowl where everything gets stirred up. So areas that are highly concentrated are going to move into areas that have lower transmission like Michigan and this is your chance to protect yourself and others. Um, during Thanksgiving, we said trans, um, people are traveling. It, what have we learned? We learned if you're sick, stay home. When it comes to COVID, you can test. For flu, if you're fe feeling fluish, you can reach out and get a test. Wear a mask. If you're having symptoms, don't share, don't spread. Um, another issue is uh, RSV, so it is spreading widely in the community. This virus has the most severe outcomes in infants and seniors. Pediatric ICUs across the state are filling up or full and are needing to be expanded with ICU beds um, and they are overwhelming our pediatric health system. So if you have an infant in your life, you know, restrict who and where they're going to be around and their potential exposure. Um, watch closely children who are exhibiting symptoms, uh, family members who are exhibiting symptoms, and consult a pediatrician if they're showing distress. Um, with the data up, uh, update this week, we saw attempts to project out winter models we know that um, transmissible diseases increase in the winter because we spend less time outside, more time after the holidays. Um, and so they've done a couple different models depending, but having all three of these viruses that are widely transmitted being stacked on top of each other, you can have low transmission of two and a wave of a third. Um, the most concerning is if we see three 
uh, increases for each of them all stacked on top of each other. So showing precautions, the new Pfizer and Moderna Omicron boosters are approved and available. I got my booster and flu shot back at the end of September. Felt a little achy, but um, it continues the protection from severe disease and death. Flu shots, like I said, oh, get your flu shots, but other vaccines for seniors, including shingles and pneumonia, and for kids who might be delayed in some of their boosters, um, need to check in with their doctors. Take care of yourself and each other. Use our mitigation techniques, testing, common sense precautions, ventilation when you can, although when it's cold, people don't want to roll down the windows, um, and masking. What else? Legislative updates from Lansing. I serve on the insurance committee. I just returned from NCOIL in New Orleans, which is the National Conference of Insurance Legislators. It was fascinating. The topics of <coughs> health care insurance include a model legislation on genetic testing for cancers and other genetic um, diseases that have targeted treatments and therapies that can increase outcomes, um, reduce uh, the amount of time it takes to treat them. And so this is legislation that has been advanced in um, a variety of states and we're looking at does this fit the needs of Michigan. Another hot topic at NCOIL was data privacy. Most people are familiar with HIPAA which is Health Insurance Privacy Protection and Privacy Act, or FERPA, which is Family and Education Privacy Act. Um, but do you know what rights you have to your data, <coughs> in particular when you share apps? So these are things that you opt into. You um, voluntarily put your health information, personal information, um, do you have the right to delete that information and take it out of the public realm? Yeah. What if issues like abortion criminalize some of these? Oh, really? um, and so that's the next piece of data privacy oh, as we have man. more and more virtual yeah. and online um, apps and, and programs, uh, making sure that your privacy rights are protected. The Unemployment Insurance Agency has contracted with Deloitte to revamp their system. We can agree that it's been um, it's in serious trouble. And having helped more than 2,000 residents through the COVID crisis of unemployment, um, continuing to have uh, help community members who are receiving letters to repay their benefits, which we need to let them know the steps that they do not need to as long as they follow along, that there are waivers and they're protected. Um, I've sponsored legislation to improve UIA, including the requirement to communicate in plain and simple language. And in the majority, I believe that an overhaul of the unemployment system is coming. I'm a member of the Poverty and Homelessness Caucus and specifically chair the subcommittee for youth homelessness. Um, and the number one need in our community is access to supplemental food supplies. People are working families, but paychecks don't go as far as they used to. There is a Food Finder app that identifies local sources where you can get supplemental food for your household. Um, Gleaners has an app for their food distribution networks. Get that word out there. No family should be short of food or nutrition uh, because there are a lot of supplemental sources in our community to help paychecks go a little farther every month. In district. So a good 40 to 50 percent of my time as state representative is spent in our district serving the community. Um, I've served on the Warren Centerline Prevention Coalition as part of my uh, commitment to address opioids and substance use disorder. Uh, and this last weekend, I participated in my second coalition building panel. We team with citizen activists to grow awareness, prevention, and treatments. 
And right now we have opioid settlement dollars that are coming back to our community, a significant amount. And we need to have a, com um, a game plan on how those dollars are going to be spent. Spent to treat people who are facing addiction and recovery. We need to have a game plan to use part of those funds for prevention and interventions and make sure that we don't squander a one-time resource. FAFSA applications are open if someone in your life is applying for college or looking to fund their college. Um, don't wait until tax season. You can apply as early as October. What, uh, Warren Wastewater Treatment Director Brian Clore is offering an informational session, 6 p.m., Wednesday, November 30th, at Warren Community, Auditor Community Center Auditorium. Um, is going to explain what happens to your wastewater uh, and how the city plans to address critical infrastructure updates. I encourage anyone who is curious, has concerns, to come learn and ask your questions. I plan to be in attendance as well. November is Fire Safety Awareness Month. Um, Tuesday, November 29th, I'm partnering with Center Lines Pro, um, Public Safety and fire department to provide a public safety presentation on fire safety. So they brought up some very interesting things. Recently they did a demonstration on the proper way to um, fry a turkey with Thanksgiving comma. We see um, a lot of structural fires because it's not, they're not preparing them correctly um, and injuries. We don't want that to be your Thanksgiving um, memory. Also things to think about is having a go bag with important information, um, copies of prescriptions. So if you have a structure fire that leaves you without access to that, where are those papers? What is that um, important information? How is it accessible? Is it something you can leave in the trunk of a car or a bank, um, po a bank box? Uh, but they have lots of ideas on how you can keep yourself and your family safer. So come join me for that. November is Men's Cancer Awareness Month. Self-checks and screenings are key to catch um, and treat cancers before they become life-threatening. So uh, cancer is a difficult topic to um, discuss. It can be scary, but we know that it's more survivable than ever if you know your risks um, and you ask the questions when you need to. And this, is the final community conversation for the 28th House District. I will take office in the new 13th House District, which is Eastern Warren and Osborne neighborhood in Detroit, starting in January, January 1st. Um, this area will be um, represented by State Representative Nate Shannon in the North End, and Representative-elect Donovan McKinney will represent the rest of the community. Thank you for the opportunity to serve as your state representative for four years. Um, I hope that you're satisfied with the constituent services and legislative that, uh, work that I provided on your behalf.